OLED LCDs have been used with Arduino and development boards for years due to their easy driver interface and affordable price. Today in this tutorial, we are going to take things to the next level, integrating LVGA library for nicely looking user interface design on monochrome OLED display. We are going to run simple animations as startup introduction, use Square Line Studio for user interface design, which is going to generate for us the necessary LVGA library functions to be integrated later on on ESP32 microcontroller firmware. As an application, we will be running a timer on a display that can be controlled by two buttons. All the displays won't be as you ever known before, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before, with a lot of features. They also have open source communities and electronics boards and tools store. The link in the description. Alright, so here's the hardware that we are going to use uh, along this tutorial. So as you can see over here, I have this OLED screen. It has a resolution of 128 by 64 pixels. So the OLED screen has a SSD1306 controller that's being uh, interfaced over I2C with the serial clock and serial data lines that are connected to my microcontroller over here, uh, ESP32C2. You can see the connections behind the hardware that I'm using. Uh, and on my uh, MCU, I have uh, two push buttons. And this is the serial programmer that I've designed before. I'm using it only to power uh, this hardware. The intro screen that we have seen is actually running by code. It's not a GIF file. Uh, we'll have a look at that during discussing the firmware running on the ESP32C2. So you can see using the LVGL library, we can generate quite nicely looking animations. So currently I'm running LVGL library on my MCU in order to be able to have nicely looking uh, user interface design. Uh, so I can show it on this uh, LCD. So it's going to be a nice example uh, for monochrome uh, LVGA library user interface design. During this process, I've also used Square Line Studio uh, and we'll also have a look at that uh, during this tutorial. So the firmware is designed in a way that uh, when I press on this button, the timer will start. Actually, right now, at least you can see 25 frames that are being printed to the screen per second, uh, which is actually quite nice uh, value. Uh, and I can pause the timer by clicking on the uh, left button so now it's paused and then I can resume by clicking on the same button so as you can see the MCU is actually quite fast in printing frames uh, on the screen and of course I can restart the timer by clicking on the right button again so the timer has been reset you may also have noticed that uh, I don't have uh, pull up or pull down resistors on my hardware because I already have uh, the GPI open uh, pull up resistor uh, activated internally so I don't have to add it uh, on my hardware uh, and also I don't have uh, parallel bypass capacitors for uh, debouncing because I already have a debounce algorithm running on my firmware uh, and uh, these two buttons are connected to an external interrupt uh, to the GPI opens uh, of the MCU. Of course, all the details that are related to the firmware will be discussed later on, so uh, keep watching until the end. So this is actually a simple example uh, for monochrome uh, LCD user interface design with LVGA library. We are going to see everything uh, on the code that's uh, loaded to the ESP32. Uh, and the Square Line Studio and everything related to this project. Okay, so first of all, let me show you the settings of the project uh, I've used uh, to make it compatible with the monochrome uh, screen that I'm using right now, the OLED screen. So here first you can see the dimensions uh, of the screen, 128 and 64 uh, bit. 
uh, for the OLED screen that I'm using. The color depth uh, is used as 8-bit. Uh, unfortunately, Square Line Studio does not have support for uh, monochrome uh, displays, so uh, I have to select 8-bit uh, color depth. But this is not important because this is related to the color. Uh, we only have two colors uh, in our case. We have only black and uh, white, uh, or for my LCD, it's uh, blue. So I have no rotation. And here, actually, the board is not important because we are using some custom hardware. Uh, and this is the uh, version of the square line and the LVGA library that's going to generate. All right, so here's the uh, square line studio that I've used for user interface design. Uh, you will notice that the design is quite simple uh, because uh, the LED is quite small and uh, has a low resolution. So anyways, uh, let's jump into the components of our design. So here you will see that we have uh, two panels and inside these panels I have two texts that I can modify in the firmware. But here of course I've used uh, a special font, it is uh, a seven segment font. Uh, actually I've imported that uh, externally so you can see that here I've downloaded this 7-segment TTF file and then here in the font manager I can select the font that I want and then uh, select its size uh, and then when I generate it I can I can select that font when importing some text so let me show you an example how I've done that so let's add this text file for example level 1 uh, first of all we need to make it uh, black so we can see how things are going And here in the text font, uh, I need to select the font that I've imported and it's uh, 7 segment 52. This is the size. Now you can see that the added uh, text is in the font that I've uh, installed. Anyway, so let's delete that. Okay, so regarding the panels that I'm using, they can be imported uh, from this uh, window. Uh, and of course, here you can change the size uh, and the position of it, or you can change it from this side. So I can do it this way. Uh, anyways, let's delete that. So regarding the panels that I'm using uh, here in the background segment, you can see that I've selected this radius so I can uh, change the shape of the panel just like that. And the color is white uh, in order to see how the user interface is going to appear uh, on the OLED screen. Okay, so that's all related to the uh, Square Line Studio. Of course, at the end of the day, we need to export uh, all the files uh, using this option. Uh, and the necessary header and source file will be generated for us so we can import it to our project. So here are the generated files. So here in the screens folder, you will see all the necessary functions in order to implement this user interface. Of course, what I've done here is I've uh, copied this uh, functions to my uh, project so I can uh, implement the same uh, view that you are seeing on Square Line Studio. Other than that, here you can see uh, the font. Of course, these all need to be imported uh, to the ESP32 project. Okay, so now let's jump into ESP32 firmware development and continue from there. All right, so here's the firmware running on the ESP32. Let me uh, clear this window so we can uh, go step by step. So we can here start from the main. Let me get this a bit larger. All right, so let's start uh, from the main uh, function. So first of all, we can see that the display is getting initialized. Of course, this is related to the uh, uh, I squared C and the uh, OLED driver selection and then passing that to the LVGA library. We'll discuss that. Uh, and after that, I'm initializing uh, two input interrupts so I can monitor the state of the uh, buttons that I have uh, on my board. And then here I'm adding two buttons uh, with their callbacks. So when a button is pressed, a specific function will be called as a callback. Uh, I have actually written a complete uh, library about button interface so it will feature of course uh, button uh, debounce and two button states and they are uh, button released and long press so let's get back to the main and then here you can see that i have two tasks uh, and they are the interrupt handler so here you can see uh, this function will only run when a notification is received from button interrupt and we can see this in the interrupt layer so here uh, whenever an interrupt occurs, a notification from ISR uh, will be sent to this task so it can run. 
and here actually depending on the received uh, interrupt ID which is actually nothing but the GPIO number that's causing the interrupt is passed to the bound the bounce function uh, so I can process that and then uh, these callbacks uh, that are really the left and right buttons can be called uh, from there so here inside the button callback functions uh, we can see that uh, the timer control functions are used so here if the right button is clicked and the timer is running uh, it's reset uh, otherwise it will be created from scratch and in the left button callback we can see that if, if the timer is paused it will resume uh, otherwise uh, it will pause if it's running okay so that's what our firmware is doing so let's get back to the display initialization and LVGL library user interface side so of course first of all we'll see that the I squared C uh, peripheral is being initialized and both the uh, serial data and serial clock pins are specified and after that we see the uh, OLED LCD specific uh, data is passed to the uh, IO handler so we see here the I squared C slave address command bits are passed to the handler of course here we see that uh, bits per pixel so every pixel will uh, correspond to one single bit we don't have reset pin so this is the uh, minus one is passed and after that we start initializing the LVGL library so it can be compatible uh, with our hardware the monochrome uh, display that we are using so we can see that the uh, buffer size is determined display dimensions monochrome uh, display option is activated uh, and the rotation is also determined and then of course after forming the display object this is passed to the LVGL user interface start function so here we can use this to form everything related uh, to the user interface side we can see here all the functions that are generated by so the square line studio I've done nothing actually but copied these functions to this uh, layer uh, and you may notice that here I'm using set color functions as zero and uh, F's so because we don't have colors on our LCD uh, this will actually turn on or off the pixel uh, within uh, the object so the things that we need to pay attention to is the uh, tile views and they are the uh, number of screens that we have on our user interface so in total we have two screens one of them is related to the uh, animation and it's on the tile view one and the other one uh, is related to the running timer so let's have a look at the uh, running animation uh, how it's going to be so first of all I'm creating here the arcs that are rotating uh, around the uh, logo of the user electronics and then here a software timer is created this is actually quite useful for running such animations so after that everything will uh, take place is inside this timer callback so here in this segment we'll see that the arcs will rotate around the uh, logo uh, and after that the arcs will be deleted one by one then a small logo uh, will start to disappear and after that uh, the larger logo will start to appear timer is deleted and then we switch to the uh, next uh, tile view which is the timer so we can continue from there so after switching to the timer screen uh, everything actually will be done be by the timer functions so uh, this function will be called by the application layer and depending on the past uh, timer state uh, a timer operation will be done so for example if we go to the timer create function uh, here we see that we are passing this callback and here actually we see that depending on the value of the timer it's separated to uh, two parts and then these uh, numbers are passed to this function so they are uh, printed to the left segment and right segment and everything related to this uh, video is shared on my github repository you will find all the code and the user interface design uh, all the square line outputs are shared here so you can uh, modify it play with it or even develop it this brings me to the end of this tutorial if you have learned something new like this video share it among your friends and tell them about user electronics stay tuned for the upcoming tutorials and bye bye